2019 is shaping up to be a huge year for RPGs on the PlayStation 4, and that's not even looking at the entirety of 2019. If you just look at the RPG offerings of the first three months of 2019, there are some amazing games that are looking to be released. And that's what we're going to be covering in this video, specifically the top 10 upcoming PS4 RPGs of early 2019. So again, this is just the early portion of 2019, and we're going to cut off the window at the end of March, so anything being released after that won't be mentioned on this list. We'll be sure to do updates throughout the year and look at games that are coming out during other portions of the year, but without further ado, let's get started with the top 10 PS4 RPGs of early 2019. First up, let's start with a game that a lot of gamers are skeptical on, but it seems to be getting more and more hype, and that is Anthem. Anthem is the latest game from Bioware, and of course, being a Bioware title and being published by EA, that's going to inherently cause a lot of skepticism. However, as we've seen more and more gameplay of Anthem, the fact that we are going to have a chance to play the game ahead of its release with a public demo, that is going to ease some of the worries with Anthem. The game itself looks good from what we've seen, however, with Bioware putting out games like Mass Effect Andromeda recently, I know Anthem is being worked on by a different part of Bioware, however, because they both have the Bioware tag on them, the skepticism is there, and just inherently being an EA published game, that's going to cause a little bit of worry, but based on what we've seen, it is shaping up pretty nicely, and there is going to be a public demo release for the game in early February, but the full game will be released on February 22nd. Moving on from that, we have one of the most anticipated games of all of 2019, and that is Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes, Kingdom Hearts is finally getting its next major entry with Kingdom Hearts 3. We've been waiting on this game for literally 14 years going back to the release of Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, I know since Kingdom Hearts 2, we have had a couple of games that added on to the story. You can point towards Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, 358 over 2, and of course, Dream Drop Distance, which was a significant continuation from Kingdom Hearts 2, but now we actually have the third game in the franchise in Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm always a little bit skeptical when we have these games from Square Enix that have been long in development. Just look at how Final Fantasy 15 turned out, but I have my fingers crossed that Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to turn out to be something special. Hopefully, the story doesn't get all too crazy, and hopefully it can still be a rather compact experience. We'll find out as Kingdom Hearts 3 drops on January 29th. Next up, we have Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Of course, this is the next game from From Software, and they're stepping away from Soulsborne for a little bit and creating new IPs. They put out Dressine on the PlayStation VR, and now they have a new big budget title in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice does follow a similar formula to Souls. To an extent, it looks to be a challenging third-person action RPG, but of of course, it's very different as well. In Sekiro, you play as the one-armed wolf, a disgraced and disfigured warrior rescued from the brink of death. Bound to protect a young lord who is the descendant of an ancient bloodline, you become the target of many vicious enemies, including a dangerous clan. Visually and presentation-wise, Sekiro is shaping up very nicely, and considering it is coming from From Software, I'm expecting a very engaging, action-oriented experience when Sekiro drops on March 22nd. Next up, we have Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. This is one of my personal, most anticipated JRPGs of 2019, and we have a lot of JRPGs coming out in 2019, so that's saying a lot. But Tales of Vesperia was a game that was originally released over 10 years ago on the Xbox 360. And over here in the West, we only got the Xbox 360 version, which is surprising because generally speaking, JRPGs are more associated with the PlayStation platform. However, Tales of Vesperia did get a PS3 release in Japan, and it was a far superior version with more lines of dialogue, more characters, and just more content. Unfortunately, we never got that version stateside until now with Tales of Vesperia the Definitive Edition. Now, of course, not only will it have the additional content, it'll be better from a visual standpoint with a higher frame rate and higher visual fidelity. As an overall game goes, Tales of Vesperia is fantastic with an awesome cast of characters, an engaging story, and a lot of content to get invested into. So if you're into JRPGs, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition is going to want to be on the lookout for. It drops January 11th. Next up, we have Y2K, a postmodern RPG. This is a game that's going really under the radar, but you need to know about it. It's a surreal Japanese-style RPG when a mysterious woman vanishes from an elevator in front of his eyes. The fresh graduate Alex assembles a squad of internet misfits to investigate her disappearance, tackle turn-based battles with a novel blend of twitchy minigames, weird weapons, and weirder enemies. This game has an awesome presentation style, and it could turn out to be one of the sleeper hits of early 2019. It drops January 17th. Next up, we have God Eater 3. 
God Eater is a franchise that's garnered a relatively niche following over here in the West. It's a big franchise over in Japan. However, over here in the West, there are a few gamers that know about it, but the ones that do know about it are really engaged in it. So what is God Eater? Many will describe it as Monster Hunter with a more anime look to it, and I definitely get that comparison, but God Eater has its own flair to it. It's got a story that's more in your face, and the content sometimes is a little bit repetitive, but overall, there is a ton of content here and a lot to get invested into. God Eater 3 hits the PS4 on February 8th. Next up, we have the follow-up to one of the most anticipated games of early on in this generation, and that is Tom Clancy's The Division 2. The Division was considered by many to be one of the more disappointing games of early this generation. However, Ubisoft stayed committed to the experience, they continued to update it, and The Division turned out to be a rather compelling game by the end of it. Now we have The Division 2, and it looks to be building upon the first game's successes with a bigger world, more content, better visuals, everything you would expect out of a high-quality sequel. If you were turned off by The Division early on in 2015, I would implore you to go back and give that game a second chance because there's a lot to like in The Division now and expect that to be built upon with The Division 2 as it drops on March 15th. Next up, we have one of the most popular free-to-play titles finally hitting the PlayStation 4, and that is, of course, Path of Exile. Path of Exile is a game that we've been expecting to hit the PS4 for a little bit. Originally, it was scheduled to drop in December, but it was unfortunately delayed, but now it'll be coming very soon. If you don't know what Path of Exile is, it's a dungeon-crawling RPG, very similar to something like Diablo, and of course, being in that vein means that you are going to invest a ton of hours of gameplay into Path of Exile. We're talking, if you get really into it, you could be spending north of hundreds of hours. And best of all, Path of Exile is a completely free-to-play experience. If you do want to invest money, you can do so, but you can also have a quality F2P experience as well, and Path of Exile will finally be making its way over to the PS4 in February. Next up, we have another Japanese RPG that I'm personally very excited for, and that is The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is widely received as one of the best JRPG franchises that is going on right now. This game has already been released on the PS3, PS Vita, and PC, and everyone that's played it at this point has pretty much said the same thing in that it's an incredible JRPG franchise, but it should be noted that this is a four-part JRPG franchise, so you're only getting part one here. Part two is also set to be released later on in 2019 on the PS4, and those two parts encompass the first half and kind of a standalone story of Trails of Cold Steel, but then it does continue on in part three and part four. We haven't even seen the release of part three and part four on any platforms over here in the West. Those just came out in Japan, so imagine the translation for that to take quite a while, but for now, you can get invested into Trails of Cold Steel one and then two later on in 2019. Now, what are these games? They're pretty traditional JRPGs, but at the same time, because they are so fleshed out, because you are getting a 60-hour experience out of each of these games, the world and the characters are so well-developed, and it's some of the best world-building that you're gonna find in a JRPG. The turn-based gameplay is also great, the music is excellent, but the primary strength of this game does really come from the storytelling and the plot twist at the end of the first game is one of the best ones that I've ever seen in a JRPG. Won't give away any spoilers, but I implore you to check it out for yourself, Trails of Cold Steel finally hits the PS4 on January 22nd. And finally, we have another RPG that's going a little bit under the radar, and that is Ghost of a Tale. Ghost of a Tale is an RPG that's already been released on PC, and it's been received very well over there, but now it's coming to the PS4, and it's described as an action RPG where you play as Tilo, a mouse and minstrel caught up in a perilous adventure. The game takes place in a medieval world populated only by animals and puts an emphasis on immersion and exploration. It features stealth elements, disguises, conversations with allies, and enemies and quests. Yes, from a technical standpoint, this isn't the most impressive game in the world, but it's coming at you at a budget price point, and it could be a pretty interesting RPG nonetheless. We don't have an exact release date, but we do know it's coming sometime in February. So that's going to conclude this video of the top 10 PS4 RPGs coming in early 2019. What do you think? There's a lot of variety in the RPG offerings of early 2019. Personally speaking, it's hard not to be excited for Kingdom Hearts 3, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and then of course for me, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition and Legend of Hero Trails of Cold Steel look fantastic as well. And I do think Y2K, a postmodern RPG, could end up surprising a lot of people. But we want to hear from you guys. What PS4 RPGs are you excited for in early 2019? Let us know in the comments section down below. That's going to conclude this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.